Making a life worth living and retirement worth having is really about having enough people in our lives to make a difference in times of struggle as well as in times of success. Because when we are in moments of struggle, we really need other people to come into our lives to help us to move forward and to openly help us make sure we're not being harmed by the people who say they care about us. There's a lot of people out there who'd like to control a person. There's a lot of people out there who are monsters. There are a lot of people out there who are also really good people who know how to help someone in modest and simple ways. In one area of the community, a small investment in someone can mean the world to them. It can change their life forever. In another part of the world, a large investment means something to someone else. The reality is no one is without a need in their life. The reality is that many people miss out on opportunities to help someone, and that little missed opportunity puts someone further down a path into struggle. And sometimes it's their fault, and other times it's their arrogance, and other times it's them just thinking selfishly only about themselves, their own children, their own families, their own legacies, but they're not realizing that people are their legacies. How they impact someone, how they handle themselves, how they love on someone, how they come and celebrate of life with others is really what life is about. You see, celebrating life with other people is really exploring who God has called them to be. Whether they are a bald guy like me, or whether they are someone world famous, or whether they're just a modest mom somewhere in the middle of mid-America who loves a television show, it doesn't really matter. What really matters is what that individual has to bring to the world. They might have a brilliant idea, but they have no methodology, no strategic alliances, no investment money to produce that idea. Wouldn't it be wonderful if people of means and power started to utilize those millions they get in marketing dollars to help people to go further in life instead of just gifting people of means who can get to their programs? You see, that therein is the difference between someone who's working in volunteerism versus someone who's really voyeuring on other people's lives. The voyeur just takes in information, makes jokes, and moves on. The volunteer literally says, you know what, I'm going to make a difference for this person. I'm going to make a real difference. I'm going to allow them the fame, the fortune, the opportunities to produce something that just might make a difference and an impact on the world in a way that God could allow something to occur for everyone involved. I'd really like to see a film produced. It's something that I've been working on for a while in my mind as I was traveling and driving in my vehicle. You see, driving and traveling allows me to produce the most creative work possible because I literally can drive and listen to what my mind is thinking about, but openly there's no distractions. And I enjoy going places and exploring new things, and literally that's what I did this morning. I explored some of the, the walking community again and enjoyed going into places and trying their buffets and discovering whether or not their people are really marketing their companies well or not, or whether they're really making snide comments and snotty responses like I experienced the other day in a small restaurant that I went simply to get a milkshake when I had a little bit of money. The reality is that the secret shopper is someone who is unknown to the people who work for you. That person goes in literally and just enjoys the service, but they're making notes. They're hearing com connections going on within employees groups, and they're also hearing the comments they make after consumers leave. And that sometimes create marketing fiascos for large companies and small. But today I'm talking a little bit more and more about marketing. I'm also talking about the honor of privilege of helping someone move a life beyond difficulties that are being put upon them by the liars and the thieves of the world. I literally have been stolen from in every place I've been since I left of home of almost 10 years. I've had people lie about my name. I've had people destroy my life. I've had people destroy my property, my personal records of life abroad, life locally, and they just thought they'd have a fun time doing it. This morning, I discovered a bunch of things back in my bags, and the only possible way they could get there was if someone came into the night, literally, and put things in my bags while I slept. How they got through a locked door, how they got through things in front of the door, I'll never know. But openly, the programming of the mind is a unique thing that people can do, and psychologists often use their little techniques on people without their consent. But in reality, we have to look at how people harm people's lives. And people harm people's lives by trying to play God in their life, which is ill-willed and illicit and predominantly illegal. You see, we have human rights in this world that so many people forget about it's not even funny. We don't talk much in comedic shows about theft and the impact it has on people's souls. We allow people to think they're above the law, and even those in law enforcement sometimes think they're above the law, above international law, above civil rights law, and they utilize their own little lies of thinking, I'm just on my path in life. 
when really they're mobbing an individual and destroying their right to have opportunities to make new relationships and go further in life. I've literally been researching a lawsuit that I'm in the midst of, if you will, and I've had cops walk up and look down on my papers. Now that's just practical information. It's what I observe, it's what I experience, and openly, there shouldn't be a situation where every security guard gets a ping on the phone because somebody's in their presence. That's kind of ill-willed and immoral. But openly, I'm talking about the realities of technology, that technology companies can allow and deny access without really telling the people who are paying for those services. I'm in the little midst of possibly losing my really inexpensive websites because I'm not sure a marketing person is ever going to get my request for a simple sponsorship. How hard is it really to give somebody a sponsorship of 60, 70 some dollars and give them a logo to utilize to sponsor them? I don't really know. In my lifetime, I did a lot of letter writing for students in my programs. As a result of my letter writing, they were able to enter into graduate school, get into college as they wanted to, and openly I produced good results for them. I honored their time in my program, the relationships we had, the quality of my investment in them and their investment in my program, and that's how life goes forward with people. We make an effort. We stand up for others. We protect their rights. We don't get involved in stealing from them or taking things that they're trying to bequeath on behalf of someone else and then putting them back in their house as if it's a game with their family who is trying to make them look unwell. There's a lot of people in this world who don't get the game they're getting put into. Sometimes law enforcement get people to do things illegal only to take those people who did illegal things off to jail. It's the foolishness of the world, but I'm talking about a lot of things. Now in my film it's called <clears throat> The Dragon Priest, I'm literally looking for people. I'd love to produce a film that in truth is completely, totally produced by God. Now how do you do that? Well, you allow a tool to help you select those people. Then you go through the tryouts and decide who plays what part. And openly, that's sort of a strategy I'd love to see put forward to see how far could that film go? Would it flop completely or would God bless it? Think about other people in the world who promote God in different ways. We had Dennis Waitley, who I think has passed, who promoted himself through the ways of business means. We also have had other people in the authorial realm who decided not to exactly talk about metaphysics, but they decided to put it in the idea of the realities of making dreams occur. Then we have people who really profess God's name that we've seen, like Joel Osteen and others, who we really love to listen to because of their positive approach to selling God and marketing a Bible story that's been around for a millennium. Now think about that. I've often talked about the incredible marketing talents of Jesus himself and the people who promoted him going forward. That 12 men literally changed the face of the planet with the visions and opportunities that were productive predominantly talked about within that literature work. And we still know about them today, and Bibles are usually gifted away to people. But openly, are we really looking at all the Bible verses? Are we looking how to use a Bible so that it makes sense to us in our particular moment of time? What I know is that God leads me to Bible verses I need to be seeing, and I also know that God can lead me to a church to hear a message that I need to hear. But I also know that the people in that church can monkey up the relationship that could go forward in that moment of time when God leads a person to an organization, to a synagogue, to a church, to literally any Kabbalah center or any other philosophical type of group that is trying to promote the positive, peaceful assembly of people with common ideas, common uh, interests, and literally just about every other thing they'd like to promote in a loving and liberty-oriented way. Now, I often talk about life, love, and liberty, and I'm worried about how our country is going, much like my late father was, that he was more worried about the political realm is absolutely truth. What I'm concerned about most for people is their individual human rights to their own bodies, their own person, if you would, their own property, since I've been through theft, and their own paperwork, since I've had most of my life's uh, lessons, if you will, come from the fact that someone pilfered most all my adult life records in my life. That was immoral, it was illicit, and it was illegal, but who am I going to tell that to? There's too many people who want to say, I'm sorry, that's not possible. Or there might be malicious people who just put all that stuff back in my storage by illegally unlocking locks that are not safe and don't really provide security on our storage units, but openly putting things back in after they pilfered through my other property and stolen important works. And I go back to this photo that I had of my loving spouse of many years sitting in our fireplace at Christmas time and literally right next to us was one of our most family's prized possessions. And I just found that photo has been cut. The photograph of myself and that, that woman that loved me for a long time completely taken off and simply that little picture of my property left in its place.
It really looks like the mark of family is messing around with me, but openly, who's going to prove it? They're all going to lie, or they're all going to say it's not true, or they're all going to say he's mentally unwell. Now, what would be the reason for them to do that? So that they could have more inheritance at the time of my mother's passing. Isn't that an ill-willed thought? But openly, it's kind of like Joseph in the Technicolor Dreamcoat, where brothers and sisters were jealous of a father's love of a child. My father helped me, I'm very honest about that, but he loaned me things like a bank. I always had to pay those things back, I had to work those things off, I had to literally pay the interest that he wanted, but it was always cheaper than a local bank. And let's face it, today banks are trying to take away parts of our paychecks. If you go to a bank with a paycheck that comes from a company that uses that bank, but you don't have an actual account in that bank, what do they do? They take 3% of your income. Now, is revenue generation really at that point with banks that they don't know how to stop their marketing waste of money to allow people the rights to their own earnings? That's something we really need to think about. But I'm someone who sees things. I'm someone who observes things. I'm someone who literally observes life, and I openly know that the homeless in our community are often underserved. There's not enough places for them to reside is absolute truth. That we have absolutely gorgeous buildings around this community that put lights on all night long, wasting electricity, but they won't allow a homeless person to get in out of the cold. It's pretty easy to produce a respectful place. It's pretty easy to put training into that program that literally says, these are the rules. You don't follow the rules, you go outside. We're not going to call a police on you, we're simply going to put you out with our security people. But most people are lacking in training. I've even discovered that at the library, that they have these problems where people make a mess out of the toilets. I'm like, what the heck is wrong with people? This is a world nation here. We don't make messes in bathrooms and leave them like children. But openly, it's about how you promote it. It's about how you talk about it. It's about how you help people to understand that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness belongs to everyone. I just walked through an alleyway and saw the literal trash that people just thought that they'd leave there. Now, maybe they were homeless, but there was a garbage can right there. How hard is it to make that garbage can? Not hard. In Japan, they kind of have a policy of no garbage cans to a point. They have some outside of Lawson's and 7-Elevens and places like that, of course. But in general, the concept is you bring your, your, your own food and drink out to a celebration, like uh, during the cherry blossom seasons when we have picnics and things like that. And then literally you take your garbage home and put it in your own garbage baskets. They don't provide people toilet paper in places. They use marketing packets of tissue paper, literally Kleenexes, if you will, that have information in the back that people stand their 20-somethings and hand out for free. So everybody's got a bit of toilet paper, if you will, and through tissue packets when they go into the public restrooms. But even public restrooms in Japan are different than ours. There's no throne throughout most of them. They actually have a squat pot, I'll call it, and openly it took some maneuvering to figure out how to squat, get your pants between your knees so that you don't lose your wallet into the, the drench. Now, that's a common thing that I often had to teach my students who were going to Japan, and I literally would squat and show them how to do it without dropping my drawers. But openly, I didn't want them to fall over, and I didn't want them to fall one way or the other. And I know that when my father and mother came to visit, my father came out of the stall and said, now, which way was I supposed to face? And that's a great story. Now, anybody who knows Japanese language knows that that's the truth. There are Western toilets. You just have to look for those signs, and you can find them. They also have bidets in their toilets in their homes, and that's a shocker if you didn't realize it was you were hitting a button to spray your butt, but that's okay too. But openly, these are the funny stories I'd love to tell you sometime if you come to my Japanese language program. If you want to learn Japanese language from me, you've got some free videos you can watch online unless the jerk who's been harassing my life and harming my life tries to delete them, and that's a federal offense. You see, that's the problem in the world, that we have people who don't do their jobs to provide people the right to their own technology. There are companies that literally will deny a small person some help because they'd rather go after the race cars of the world. And what good did that really provide them? Did it really provide them a lot more clients? Not exactly. Making the life a difference for someone who's in a modest situation, who's in a struggling situation, is what makes headlines. That's why we love those stories that do home remakeovers and things like that for people who are struggling. That's why those things sell. Survivor is one of those programs that was produced by somebody's husband and openly when they have some disaster occur, people are concerned with it. But openly, it's all about building relationships, not at all. It's about manipulations and games. And that's not what the real world is about. The real world is about loving on people, helping them to move forward in life and not taking away their little rights in some mental health game of sorts. And openly, that's what we have to focus on is the human rights of American citizens to have actual toilets 
in a walking community. I find that absolutely comical that we can go through this walking tour of Indianapolis, but there's no public toilet to be found. And if you approach a restaurant, it says on the door, no public restrooms. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Does that mean that I'm going to come in, I'm going to eat my food, I'm going to drink some beverages, but there's no place for me to relieve myself? Okay, once again, fundamental human rights law, declaration of human rights, we should have clean toilets or something to that effect. Look it up. It's kind of an international law. But they're so worried about the derelicts coming in because no one is taking the time to train these folks into how to get what they need in those moments of time. It's really about the humility that we have to go through poverty. And that's some of the hardest things in the world. I literally got my head shaved by a lovely group of young women who just said, you need to clean up a little bit. They helped me and I almost cried. But that's the kindness in this world when you just say, this is what's going on for me. This is what I'm trying to accomplish. Can you help me, please? How hard is it to help someone who's really telling you the truth about what's going on for them? But openly, that's the reality of the world, that we just assume everybody's a liar, everybody's trying to manipulate, everybody's trying to steal something for their life, and that's not true. We all have to make a life worth living. We make a life worth living by having employment worth having. We make retirement worth having by having long-term career opportunities. And there's a lot of folks in the community who sell this idea that they're gonna help people get bridge jobs. No offense, but a bridge job doesn't really pay all the bills. It does cost people their homes sometimes, and this idea of allowing people to stay in our homes is lovely, but not everybody respects our privacy, our property, and our personhood once we're in that situation with them. In reality, I'm talking about a lot of different things. I'm sort of an innovative idea person. I'm also someone who's always been an early adopter. I can see things in advance of things sometimes, and sometimes I miss them, but the reality is that that's what life is like for an early adopter. They're always looking at new technologies, new opportunities, and let's face it, we've got to get to some solar paneling at some point for our lives, because this waste of electricity in these communities that leave lights on in stores all day long is a waste. We could literally be putting that money into setting up some homes for some people who are homeless, getting them some training programs, and more importantly, getting better training programs in the jails that we have. Even Trump talked about this on the news today, or at least one of the news programs I was listening to in NPR, that his little reaction is if we want to get people out of the jail system, we have to provide them better education about how to produce lives so that doesn't bring them back into those situations. Now, I've talked a long time, I've talked about a lot of topics, but that is in essence what freeform journalism is about. We simply literally give us a moment of time to talk, to let you listen, and for you to pick and choose what God is impressing upon your soul based on what is communicated and articulated by that reporter to say. You see, it's your reaction within your own soul that is put there by either a loving soul or by a, a difficult spirit. You see, that's how we know what's right. What is right is that we don't do something unlawful. What is right is how we love on someone to give them an opportunity to go on in life, not to take all their opportunities away because we don't agree with their life. Well, there are a lot of things about your life I might not agree with, but it's not my job to go in and tell you how to live your life. I know for a fact that God loves all people. I know that he protects those who submit everything. And I also know that there are monsters in this world who take away people's rights in the name of God, which is literally what Ben Laden used to do. And openly, thank God, that's almost ridiculously over with. But in the world, there's a lot of poverty, but there's a lot of poverty right here in our own communities that we ignore as we drive by, that people swerve out and around because they think it's wrong, or people solicit inappropriately, trying to shove food on them and drink on them, like what happened to me the other day in Noblesville, when I happened to be walking around taking care of my errands. If you don't have a car, you gotta walk. And I had the right to go walk and produce for myself my own meal, just like I always have, regardless of whether I've got canned goods in my bag or whether or not I'm simply talking to an employee or an owner of a shop and say, hey, here's what I'd like to do. And openly, most people are very kind when you're honest about what's going on for you. So in the end of this little audio cast, this is called Freeform Journalism. And that's a new coming effect that's coming into the community and into the world. And openly, it's time to make sure that the religious reporters get their butts off the news stages and into the communities. Because I get a little tired of hearing their little opinions about life for other people that they've never met, they've never lived with, they've never understood anything about, but they're out there in our news channels making comments as if they're commentators on the world. They're not. Physicians sort of do the same thing, and I literally almost got ruined in a situation unless I pissed all over a physician. I want you to know I was humiliated after that moment in time. I literally got down on the floor and begged God forgiveness for being so rude to that man, but openly, it worked. I got what I needed, what was lawful to my life, and that's the truth. That we have people who lie, steal, and cheat away a life from someone that is not their lawful right to do.
Now, this has been a free-form sort of journalism moment. This is not a magic and mayhem moment. This is not a marketing minutes moment that I used to produce in a suit and all that sort of fancy stuff. As you can see, I'm a bald man with a big beard, and openly, I like it. This is my little, is my little peace shirt that I love, and openly, you cannot take it from me. But that's the reality of the world, isn't it? That we have simple things in our life that we really care about. I carry what I need on my person. And that's it. What's in storage is what's in storage or what may or may or not be in storage anymore because of the thieves who think they have the right to manipulate locks, go in and steal my property. And openly, that's the illness of the world. The people who lie, steal, and cheat people out of their lives, personhood, paperwork, and property. That will always be my marketing mantra, my recommendation to politicians to get on the bandwagon. We're being stolen from at the pumps is totally true, but that's a story for another day. This has been Blake Henson of Blaze Communications, a virtual reality audio casting program until I can get my podcast back online. Thanks very much for listening.